others as they do have a lasting impact. Through our losses, we can provide what you need to fight the many battles that we will face in this war against destructive driving. No phone call or text is worth a life. Whatever it is, it can wait. So now we will hear from our first panel. We will begin with Kristen Murphy from Naples, Florida, who lost her 19-year-old daughter, Chelsea, in 2010. Next, we will hear from Russell Hurd, who lost his 26-year-old daughter in 2008 in the Orlando area. And to conclude our panel, we'll hear from Elisa Ski, who lost her 13-year-old daughter, Marque, in 2008. Thank you. Hello and good morning. My name is Krista Murphy, and I'm here to tell the story of my daughter, Chelsea Murphy. I, like many other parents, I can remember the first day my child was born. You remember their first holiday, their first word, their first day of school, all the first things that your kids have in life. What I don't have the memory of is her first child being born, the wedding that she was going to plan, the nurse that she wanted to be. Those are memories I don't have, and there's many more memories we would have had together. Chelsea was born on October 28th, 1990, and from day one, I knew she was going to be different. We lived in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. She was a colicky baby and cried a lot. I'd have to walk her at night, put her in a car seat, drive her around town. She took after me, she was hard-headed, stubborn. One thing Chelsea had though, she was very independent. Chelsea had a very loving way about her. She played softball from the age of five, even though she couldn't hit the ball, she had fun doing it. She never gave up. She spent summers from the time she was five months old with my mother down in Seattle City, New Jersey. Chelsea and my mom loved the beach and would be there together all summer long. She'd caught my dad and let her drive his boat. She had a style all of her own, a fashion, and of course her own mind. <clears throat> As she got older, she was determined to make something of her life. She went into the job court in Miami, and she loved it. At times she would want to come home because she was homesick, but she was determined to finish and not give up. And she did. She, she finished job career and came home in January 2009. She was at home with me for the birth of my twin. She was in the operating room with me. She was here for her brother Tyler when he came out of his program. Her and Tyler were 15 months apart. They were inseparable as they got older. She never gave up on her brother even when he was in trouble. She was always there for anybody. She would always give you a second chance, never judge you. She would be everybody's friend. She never judged you by your looks, the color of your skin, your religion, or your past. Those that knew Chelsea knew that if they were in trouble or lonely or fighting, all they had to do was make that phone call, call her, and she'd be there to listen. It didn't matter what hour of the night. She'd love you until you could love yourself. She had a heart for everybody. She had enough room in that heart to add more. In January 2003, I made the decision to move to Naples, Florida to be near my parents as they moved here in 2002. Things were difficult at first. Chelsea, she had to make new friends, which she did. She had typical teenage moments. Some that drove me crazy. Chelsea started getting into some trouble, and I made a decision to send her to a military-type school as part of a program. It was a six-week, what they call, tune-up. To my surprise, Chelsea started to turn her life around. She actually loved that structured school. She wanted to go into the Marines when this was all over. <clears throat> the school agreed that Chelsea could finish out the year there instead of just staying there the six months. She asked to stay there longer. They even invited her back for her eighth grade year. And she took them up on that. <clears throat> she graduated the eighth grade from that school as gunnery. Now she had to go back to public school once again. Chelsea started acting out. She said to me one day, Mom, please just sign me out. Let me go in the job for her. And I did. She did four years of high school and two years of certified medical assistant, all in 16 months, because their job where you got to work at your own pace. She threw herself into this program. She just, she wanted to be somebody. Chelsea came home from job corps and went to work. It was a big part, she was a big part of her job as an employee at Kill One's Ice Cream. They considered her family, it was a family-run ice cream store. 
down in Naples, Florida. After Chelsea's crash and accident, she uh, actually, Kilwins has her picture and her story up on their wall. On the night of March 9, 2010, Chelsea called me to inform me that she'd be getting the long-awaited keys to her first apartment that she's going to share with the love of her life. She also just found out she was pregnant. So I picked her up from work and took her to get her key and drop off the first load of her belongings. We went back to my house after that because I only lived a block away so that she could um, get the utilities in her name, do a couple other things that she needed to do. She's going to meet her brother over at her apartment to carry up the heavy stuff while I was at my meeting. At 9.10 that night, Chelsea called me to see what time I'd be coming home and then if she walked the 10 minutes to my house to pack the rest of her stuff, would I meet her there and drive her home? And I told her yes. As I was approaching the intersection to where I lived, I was stopped and detoured because of an accident. There were so many cop cars and ambulances. And I didn't know what was going on, but the pit of my stomach got just open. That wasn't my child because I knew she was walking to my house. It went through my mind that that might be Chelsea. So I called her cell phone and her friend answered her phone and said, no, Chelsea's at your house packing. So I went ahead and went around the accident scene and went into my house and I didn't see any lights on and Chelsea's stuff hadn't been touched and I just knew that that accident had something to do with her. A feeling went through me that I don't think any parent can explain unless you've gone through it. I went up to the accident and gentlemen there told me that two young girls were hit by a car and met it backed out of there. And I told that man that one of them I think was my daughter. And he said, well, they were about 19 years old. He pointed me to, in the direction of the Florida Highway Patrol officer who had an ID of one of the girls. That was Chelsea's friend. Chelsea didn't have an ID on her. The cop told me he wasn't for sure if that was my daughter or the other person, but I knew it was her. I was looking around the accident scene. I could see her purse and her shoes, and I knew the other person was my daughter. Things went foggy. I don't remember too much. I remember the cops, they didn't want me to leave the accident, but I was determined I was going to the hospital because I knew that she needed me. Chelsea was taken to Lee Memorial Hospital in the trauma unit. Her injuries included a traumatic brain injury, a broken neck in two places, and a broken pelvis in five places. She's in the coma and lived for five days. And on that Sunday, she was pronounced brain dead. This started another roller coaster ride in my life. I had to start planning for the funerals. I had two funerals to plan for because we were from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, and a lot of her friends lived back there. Our family plot was back in Pennsylvania. So we had the one funeral down here in Naples and flew her body home and did it all over again up there. I later learned that the 19-year-old driver that hit my daughter was talking on his cell phone to a friend. He never knew that he hit two people that night. He pulled into the Walmart parking lot. He'd taken off from the scene and pulled into the Walmart parking lot because it was the closest place I guess he figured he could pull. He had damage to his car. His friend came to pick him up in the parking lot, and as they were pointing out, they saw that this was bigger than what he thought. He did call the cops himself. He did tell the cops he was the cause of that accident. He wanted to know what he hit. He thought he hit a water cooler. Instead, he hit two people. We don't need Florida to do any more studies on what texting and talking on a cell phone can do to a person and their family. You're going to hear stories and families here that can tell you what the results are of that study themselves. We don't know if we need no more parents to join the club that I'm in. Our children are in a unique club themselves. We can never touch them again, talk to them again, tell them to be safe, hold them. Hopefully, with myself, 
and a few other people up here are going to tell you to study enough for the state of Florida to want to help us get this law out. Our children died a preventable death. I never in a million years thought that I would bury a child due to a simple little device. My life will never be normal, I will never be the same again. I want people in the county where I live in Florida to hear about Chelsea's law. I want Collier County to bring that law, even if we have to go county by county. I want my daughter to know that mom fought for her. And if there's one wish I had to honor Chelsea with the law, to know that it was established for her memory and others like her. Good morning. My name is Russell Hurd, and I live in Abingdon, Maryland. I'm here today to honor my beloved daughter, Heather, who was killed by a distracted driver on January 3rd, 2008 right up the road on Highway 27 in Davenport. Certainly that memory of a chilly January morning will forever be in the forefront of my family's minds. We are haunted by the events of that morning. We woke up to a morning filled with anticipation, excitement, and wishes about to come true. We were to be meeting our Heather and her fiance Patrick in a few hours at Walt Disney World's wedding planner to discuss plans for her dream wedding. Little did we know that in just a couple hours we would be facing this. I know you all can't see this, but the headline reads, Massive Pile Kills Two. One of those two was my daughter. Our excitement had become despair. Our anticipation had changed to sorrow. In just a few seconds, potential was crushed and wishes were left unfulfilled.